Hi, I'm Andrea and welcome to Productive C Sharp. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create Blazor server-side projects. Blazor is a framework that allows you to create web application using C Sharp instead of JavaScript. There are two different hosting models for Blazor, client-side and server-side. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the server-side hosting model and how you can actually get started with it. If you go to the blazor.net uh, website, uh, this is where all the documentation is, uh, where you can learn more about Blazor. I want to very quickly show you uh, what uh, running Blazor server-side means. So Blazor is a feature of ASP.NET Core, okay? And uh, when it's running server-side, it's effectively running inside an application, uh, just a console application, that is uh, running uh, and starting the web server, that is uh, running ASP.NET Core, and then Blazor is uh, running inside it. The browser um, con it communicate with the ASP.NET Core server side using the SignalR connection. So this a SignalR connection, basically using a WebSocket, is the communication channel that Blazor use in order to send UI updates, events, and any JavaScript interrupts. All the kind of client logic is um, is uh, running on the server, and uh, like for example, calculating the DOM changes that are required, uh, and then the changes, the DOM changes are sent back to the browser to be rendered. So all the process is done server side, and that is the server side model of running Blazor. It's not rely on any WebAssembly technology. Uh, it's completely relying on having a server. This server-side uh, capability of Blazor will be released in uh, .NET Core 3 at the end of 2019. If you're watching this video uh, in later than that, uh, you are probably able to use it directly uh, as RTM in the .NET Core 3. So in order to start with uh, with Blazor, you need to install Visual Studio 2019 with a web workflow enabled. You need to install .NET Core 3 as well. When you do that, you will be able to do File, New Project. You can select the ASP.NET Core web application. Effectively, Blazor is part of ASP.NET Core. If you do Next, you will be able to specify your name, the name of the project. And then after that, you will be able to find the Blazor Blazor server side template. When you when you click create, it's basically going to create uh, a project, and I have got a project already open here that has been closed. Let me reopen it. <clears throat> I'm not going to do the details of the structures of this project, but for now I'm going to run it. And this is going to run inside IIS Express. So by default, when you create this project, it's configured to be able to run in IIS Express or standalone. I'm going to show you that in a second. So let's press F5 and see this project. This is the, the default project that is created for you. Right, so now it's opening the browser. It's uh, connecting to the server. And then it will show you the default UI. There is just a bit of JavaScript that is in, injected into the browser in, in the file blazor.server.js that is establishing the SignalR connection. And then immediately after that, it will basically render everything and you will be able to use this, um, this website. If I do F12 and I reload, you will be able to see this file. So blazor.server.js is the file, the JavaScript file that actually uh, start up the SignalR connection and the Blazor framework. And then you can see that um, WebSocket has been created here. And this WebSocket is what uh, Blazor use in order to communicate with the server and to, you know, to actually render the UI. Okay, so let's try to understand a bit better what's actually happening here. So, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using this approach? So the upload's extremely fast because everything happened on the server. So the only file, you know, kind of bootstrap file is required is this uh, uh, Blazor 7.js that is uh, downloaded and uh, the initial uh, startup of the, of the 
signal are connection, but there is uh, almost very little data that is need to be downloaded in order to be able to run. That's very different than you know running client side that requires downloading the entire uh, runtime. The code actually runs server side, so where you have the full power of um, HP on a core and on a core. Um, so you have, you have no limitation in terms of uh, like browser um, sandbox uh, kind of limitation. You can run anything on the on the server. You can use all the tooling you know, like Visual Studio, all the debugging capabilities, and this code can run basically everywhere. So you don't you can support every browser because there is no requirement to have uh, WebAssembly support in order to be able to use this um, this cap this website because there is no WebAssembly. Uh, you know, it's not use, it's not using WebAssembly effectively. Everything is happening on the server, and uh, if you are security conscious, you don't want to do have the uh, the browser to download uh, DLLs. You know, that might contain your intellectual property. That might be another plus for you if you want to use this model. And the other things is that you don't need to expose like a web API that the client needs to call because you can directly call the database uh, and uh, access your data directly from the server and just um, let Blazor just do the UI changes for you. Obviously, the downside is that there is a bit of latency, right? Because this, this is a um, connect, it's a connected model, so the application will work until there is a connection established between the client and the server. So that connection needs to be always up in order to be able to to to, to have the website working. And there is obviously a latency. Every time you make changes in the UI, this needs to go to the server and come back. That also might cause scalability problems, even if SignalR is, is, is very well performing very well anyway. Um, and the other possible downside is that you obviously need a, a server a server to be able to run uh, the ASP.NET Core, ASP Core on it. Uh, and uh, that's obviously more expensive than having simply um, doing kind of, a, kind of a serverless deployment where you can just you know put your data there and then all the application will run uh, on the client. Now, I want to show you very quickly what happens when the connection is lost with this model. So let me go back to Visual Studio, stop this debugging instance, and I'm going to change from IIS Express to Productive C Sharp. This is basically using this configuration. That means I'm going to run directly the executable that is hosting ASP.NET. So let me do F5. This will run the console application that is hosting ASP.NET Core. It will listen to a particular, um, to localhost to 5000, and then will spin up the web browser pointing to that URL. As you can see here, it's starting productivesharp.exe. And now it's starting the ASP.NET Core instance and then waiting for the URL. It will automatically open localhost 5000. And then you will be able to see basically the website as we've seen before. Perfect. This is fully functional as before. Now, this is a console ap application that is hosting the server. So now I simulate like the server goes down. If I close this, you will see that Blazor automatically try to uh, reconnect to the server, so it, it automatically try to reconnect to re-establish the, the connection. If it doesn't, it will show like fail to reconnect to the server. Obviously, you can customize this UI. We're not going to see this in this video. I want to show you that in a, in a separate video, but I wanted to show you basically demonstrate that effectively what's happening is uh, that this application completely rely on the servers to be present. Otherwise, it's completely useless. Okay, uh, of course, when uh, the service is running and there is just like some latency problem or some networking issue, this will be temporary and then the app will be back back available. Obviously, in this case, I just close completely the web service, so the app will not uh, recover. But that's just to give you the idea of uh, uh, how this model work. So this is pretty much for this video. So we are not going into the details of how this uh, project is structured, but I just want to show you how you can actually get start to create a Blazor ap application using the server-side model and uh, what are the pros and cons of this approach. Thank you very much for watching.